I uh, was always um, allured and fascinated by uh, other dimensions of time and space from a childhood. And I began, without much awareness, to find an entry into that other time and space through rituals. Uh, one of, the, if not the earliest childhood memory I had, uh, that I have actually, is a, of a ritual um, where I was crafting an altar to Jesus and Mary. We had a statue of them in our home. And I climbed up on the little stool to put a piece of fabric, like a bed sheet or a tablecloth, underneath the statue so it would hold the cloth and I cascaded the statue down in front of this um, dresser drawer. I got off the stool and I remember cutting up pieces of bread and I took the ends of the cloth that were on the floor and I began chanting and, um, and the bread would go up in front of these, the statues and I was chanting and chanting and chanting and, and I probably was chanting something noticeable that my father came and he um, took me away from that and said, stop it, what are you doing? Are you crazy? And I knew there was something there. I knew, as there's a wonderful book by Mirabar Star, and Mirabar Star has a wonderful translation of John of the Cross's Dark Night of the Soul. And in the introduction to that dark night, she writes this beautiful uh, journey of awareness of another dimensionality to life and space, which we Christians certainly call God, a Trinitarian God of love. And John of the Cross would certainly portray that same beloved lover imagery of God. But in it, she said that, that, uh, that, that we are to wonder if when we were very young, the veil opened up and we saw something. And then for the rest of our lives, the rest of my life, from that moment, even till now, there's a sense, a knowing that there is something. There is another dimension of time and space, another dimension to life. And that for me, that childhood moment around four years old, was a, was a way in which the veil opened through a ritual. I mean, it was through the ritual activity that somehow I was either being called or was responding or both to something that was, was, um, was, uh, was mesmerizing, uh, enchanting, a dimension of time and space that a child could see. And that when my father pulled me away and said I was crazy, I, I really think that he was correct. Because there is a way in which the, 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 the looking for that veil to open again as we grow in age through a childhood and, and adolescence and young adulthood and middle age and, and being, an, being an elder of the community. That that, the, that Mirabar Star is saying that, that we keep looking for this and then, and then the divine keeps wanting to reveal itself to us through other ways. And that ultimately, she says in the introduction to this book, that the ultimate ritual, if you would, or the ultimate um, way in which the divine is known, that this veil is re-entered, is not through the ritual action, but through the absence of any, through the, through the absence of any emotion or feeling or uh, uh, sense of, of presence of God, the, 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 that, that we enter through that dark night, it's called the dark night of the soul, through, that becomes, if you would, God's ritualizing towards us and loving us in a way that we're not used to either being loved or comfortable with being loved, and therefore a form of craziness. 
it's a kind of madness. I was reading Alan Watts early, early on uh, as a teenager, a young kid, and I remember there was one line where he said, we use incense in our rituals. Uh, we use incense because we are realizing that we have to go out of sense. We have to, be, we have to go out of the senses and that the incense is a way out of the sense. It's a very, a very interesting little play on words that Watts was always used to doing. So that's how it started for me. It, it, and it continued then through, uh, as a child, through the various stages of uh, Roman Catholic ritual. 